Look at me. Oh my goodness. Look at that bump. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I'm, we're just going to jump right in uh, because I know that you are, you're, you're, you're building a baby there. And so, um, and it's the end of the day for you. So we'll jump right in love. So why don't you start us off by just sharing a little bit about yourself and how you found yourself on this journey? Oh, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> myself. Um, I'm, um, I'm 40, almost 40 in two months. And, um, I'm, uh, I'm working for, um, a big company, a, a multinational company as a, as a manager in tax. I have a global role and, uh, this role eats my time and, um, uh, creates a lot of pressure for me, but as you will see in my story, I wanted a career. So, um, yeah, about my, um, about my journey, um, my journey started when I was 25. I don't know if I can say journey, but that was when I started to think of becoming a mom. I got married when I was very, very young. I was 23, just finishing university and super in love with my husband. Unfortunately, we struggled financially. I couldn't find a job even if I finished first in class. Um, my, uh, my husband hated his job, but we were in love and we thought that only, only that mattered, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but at that, um, at that time I was, um, I was a toxic person. And um, this is what I realized only after years of, uh, after destroying my marriage, hating myself, uh, blaming others for all my failures. I was um, judgmental. I was uh, criticizing, asking everyone around me to be perfect. But my, lo my, my husband loved me no matter what. And this is why, this is why uh, he has all, all my respect even today after so many year, years after, after my divorce. But to be honest, um, that is what I saw in my family and I grew it parents fighting, criticizing each other, showing their hate in front of us, uh, and also asking me to become the best. And uh, trust me, um, asking your child to be the best is something a parent should not do. Cool, I, uh, I was very good in school because I was uh, constantly pushed by my parents. Uh, because they wanted me to have a career and have money and forget about the years when I were uh, when we were poor. But being a uh, being a uh, 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 being supported by a parent to learn good in school and fight for for, for a career is is not something bad. And I'm thankful to them for this. But the environment I grew in and um, and all of, all uh, those demands uh, I had uh, to bear as a child that was too much for me. Um, so my desire to, uh, to become a mom was mixed with my desire of building a career. Um, at 20, 25, 27, when I, was, I started to, to, to um, think of, of becoming a mom, I was living um, um, in a small town uh, with, a no, with no opportunities uh, for a career. So I'm from Romania, so I am talking about a small in, in Romania. Um, and um, because of not having too much opportunities for a career, I decided that maybe I should think of uh, building a family. My husband was open to uh, of the idea of, uh, of a child and we stopped using protection. But um, because I had... Um, um, uh, painful periods and uh, months with heavy period or months without a period, I decided to see a doctor. And um, 
another one and another one and another one. Uh, not fertility doctors, but um, normal, normal gynecologist. And unfortunately, at that time, I received uh, so many different uh, diagnostics. Oh my God. Endometriosis, uh, polykystic ovaries, uh, I don't know how to pronounce, B bicornate uh, uh, uterus. Uh, yeah, it's something weird. Um, but the common conclusion of all these doctors was that I will get pregnant very hard. Um, at that time, we didn't have the, the education to continue the investigation with some fertility doctors. It was enough for me that for all these uh, all these conclusions to change this maybe into a big no, like a big big no. In my family, there was no maybe or there was no hope or let's try, no way. There was yes and no. So this is how, ladies, <laughs> I become a no person. Um, we, me and my husband, we continue not to use protection, but unfortunately I was living a no life. A no life um, made me put my career at first and focus only on that. Uh, I moved from that small town, I moved to, to the capital in Bucharest and um, uh, my desire to have a good job, uh, lux uh, luxurious life with parties, cultural events, uh, dinners outside the house, expensive clothes, expensive uh, shoes, pushed me away from my husband and my old friends. And that's why at 32, I got divorced and I, started to enjoy my uh, party life uh, with a good career. Uh, my family suffered a lot uh, because, uh, because of my divorce. You know, in, in Romania, um, in our uh, culture, in our religion, divorce at 32 with uh, no children, without a house, is, is a shame. But to be honest, I didn't see it like this. I, um, I was free and able to, to enjoy everything I wanted without any constraints from my, uh, from my family and from my, uh, for, for my husband. But um, the painful feeling of not being a mom was there. I don't know if that was, uh, if that was planted there uh, by, by the culture, by the religion, expectations from the parents, uh, my own expectations, the fact that my ex-husband already had three kids with her new, uh, his new uh, partner, um, all my friends around me had uh, child after child, so I don't know, but that feeling was there. Um, in the years after my, uh, my divorce, I, um, uh, I met a guy um, I am now with, and uh, we started <laughs> we started a real journey of attempts to have a proper relationship. Um, to be honest, I think that for more than six years we went through a nightmare of relationship uh, for both of us. Um, it was clear in, <laughs> it was clear enough that we were in love with with each other because. We were back together after so many breakups, but none of us wanted to wanted to accept that we we have real problems like um, wrong mindset, uh, wrong, wrong expectations from the relationship, uh, wrong plans. But I might say that uh, this journey made me the woman I am today. <laughs> but <laughs> thank God I realized in time that I have I have real problems and I have to. I have to correct and um, uh, I open myself to know me better, to accept my, uh, my past and mistakes and uh, uh, to, to make changes. Um, uh, I decided to uh, and started to see a therapist uh, uh, and uh, dig into my childhood. I uh, uh, started to read books about um, uh, personal development, uh, listen podcasts, meditation, yoga. Um, I also started to, to travel and uh, enjoy new places and uh, new people. But, you know, uh, all this made me more lonely. And um, uh, those friends, I thought they were my friends when we were partying, 
uh, those friends started to, to consider me uh, a freak. Um, as I said, um, I tried to, to, to have a proper relationship with, uh, with my current part, partner, partner for so long. And um, we even took into account to have a, a baby together. But there were so many unsolved issues from the past, especially for me, that we always ended up breaking up. Um, it, I think it was, I think it was m much easier for not accepting the real problems, uh, the wrong mindset ex and expectation, you know, than, than uh, work uh, and solve those issues. Um, in, 29, in 2009, no, in, sorry, in 2019, uh, I got pregnant by mistake. Um, I was devastated. I, I wanted a child, but um, I was in between my jobs. Uh, I was just resigning from a, I just resigned from a job and in three months I should have started with, uh, with my new employer. Um, my relationship with my partner was again in a, in a watershed moment again. Um, I was living in a share house with another four people. I cried for days with, without knowing what to do. And uh, I took the decision, the, the worst decision in my life. You know, with all my problems, um, I consider my, myself a strong, uh, well-organized and structured person. But in that moment, I felt the weakest lost uh, person in the world. So I had, a, I had the abortion and my world sunk. <laughs> I had, I had no idea what to do. I, I broke up again with my partner and I drifted in a, in a miserable state of mind for I think almost one year. Um, in the meantime, I retook my meditation sessions and yoga. I started to talk again with the therapist and step-by-step step, I started to see the, the light at the end of the tunnel. I, uh, and I now remember beginning of 2021 uh, when I met with my partner and we discussed again about us. I know, <laughs> I don't know for the 10th or 11th time. Um, and we both uh, admitted that um, what we did by now was wrong, inappropriate. And we thought uh, of using a couple uh, 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 therapist, a uh, relationship therapist, um, and uh, see if we have a chance to be together or we should stop circling in this situation, you know, going back and forth with, uh, with this relationship. Um, I went, uh, uh, currently I'm li I, I live in London. Uh, I moved in uh, 2018. Um, so in 2021, at the beginning, after we had this discussion, I, I went to Romania for two months. Uh, I had a nose surgery and um, we were far away from each other and we, we both focused on what we really want from each other. I mean, do we really want something from each other? <laughs> uh, my part, to be honest, my partner told me that he already saw a change in me since I started with meditation and therapy. Uh, he now saw a, a calm person who started to feel gratitude for what she has. Um, how she uh, tried to forgive herself and her past mistakes. Uh, uh, he saw a caring and smiling person with no intention uh, uh, of judging anymore. And uh, on the other hand, I saw uh, a man not building walls around him to defend himself of my criticism and constant complaints of my, uh, of my miserable life. Um, after those months, you know, to, to, uh, those two months in Romania, I came back in, uh, in the UK and uh, we both started to, <laughs> to read books. We, we read uh, the, uh, the seven principles of um, making marriage work of uh, uh, John Gottman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started to, to do a couple exercises. We meditated together in the evening. And the most important, we decided to leave the share house and we moved together, just the two of us. 
and um, we saw how every day our communication improved. Um, I also started an acupuncture session to manage my stress level and uh, also fertility. Um, an important thing is that, uh, as I said, I always focused on my, my career and uh, I wanted more and more and more. And in that, uh, in 2021, I think uh, May or something, I um, uh, received an offer of a new job. It was a much higher salary, a director role. And guess what? <laughs> I decided to reject the offer. I, um, I refused to put uh, my career as priority. I wanted to focus on me, on my relationship, and on my personal development. Um, and also after we, we felt we are in the right moment of our relationship, we decided to, to talk again about having a child and to see a fertility doctor. You know, I, I know that I got pregnant. I knew that I got pregnant, uh, pregnant once. But looking back at uh, my past and um, uh, the years I tried to, to conceive, um, I, uh, while I was with my husband and also with my, with my partner, I thought that with, uh, it would be better to, to see a doctor and check our health, both our health. So um, after, to be honest, not so many tests and scans uh, with the fertility clinic, um, I remember it was Friday evening, quite late. Uh, I think it was after 9 p.m. when the, the fertility doctor called us and uh, he said that he received all our tests and um, um, the results are not promising. And um, our only way to get pregnant is IVF. Um, my AMH uh, level was very low and my partner's uh, morphology again, very low. So those were not good news. Um, the problem is that the second day I had an acupuncture session and uh, I showed the, the acupuncture doctor, I showed the, the test, the results. And he was like, uh, but Alina, these are not bad results. You know, I'm, I mean, your AMH is, normal for your age and with Andre hmm, I think we I think we can change a, a little bit his uh, uh, his habits you know quit smoking healthy food an active life but it it's not bad you know oh my god I was so confused you know one doctor said something a fertility doctor and this guy saying that you know it's not so bad and another thing uh, important thing here is that that evening I discussed with my, uh, my partner and he told me something that I also felt, but I refused to accept. We didn't have a connection with the fertility doctor. You know, mm -hmm. he was not part of our team. Uh, we were not treated as a couple who really wants to have a child, but as two persons ready to pay for an IVF process. And that's it. You know, Ooh. and when he told me, I was, um, you know what, I think you're right. I mean, yes, we, they, he responded to all our questions, but he was not open and, you know, open to help us to, to, because we said, maybe if there is, the results are not so bad, we would like for a period to try natural, you know, but he says, no way, no way, you, you need an IVF. So because of that, um, I decided to put on hold the IVF uh, and continue to focus on my mindset. Um, I, was, I was eager to find more about how to change the pattern I have from my childhood. Um, uh, I, I wanted to see motherhood as something beautiful, fulfilling, and not as a uh, tick the box because uh, I was pressed by the family uh, or, or by, uh, by the age. And this is how I discovered your book. <laughs> and that's how it happened. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I I think I found your book on internet, just on my research. Um, I read it and I loved it. I started also to listen to your podcast um, and I 
I was shocked that I found myself in all those stories and fears. Um, and you know, I, I could have stayed with the book and uh, focus on what I learned from it, but, um, but I like the tone from your book and podcast. Uh, I liked uh, uh, your approach and being so outright. And, and I said, what the heck? I, I need this lady in my life, you know? So I was ready to pay for an IVF. Why, why not pay some, to pay something for, uh, for something that could improve, you know, my mindset? And not, not only for my fertility journey, but for me as an intelligent, capable, strong woman, you know? And um, I, this is how I, I, I started your uh, sessions. And uh, to be honest, I was so happy to attend all those uh, Saturday sessions and uh, to listen so many stories, to learn from others' experience, uh, <laughs> to hear Roseanne yelling, hell yes, <laughs> <laughs> you know, hell yes to life and opportunities and hope and fame. Um, I have to tell you here, Funny fact, you became, you became the crazy pink hair lady for my partner. <laughs> <laughs> when he was, <laughs> when he was hearing your voice while I was, <laughs> while I was, while I was listening podcast or sometimes uh, the Saturday sessions, he was like, hell yes, the crazy pink hair lady. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he liked your attitude and power. I don't know. I don't know if you remember, but um, um, I was in one of your sessions Saturday, and I told you about my decision to to uh, to buy a motorbike, even if I was planning to have a child. Yes. And you, were, you know that. You know what, girl? Go on, have a ride. You can listen listen the recording of this session. Uh, go and ride the bike, and say it loud. I'm Alina fucking David, you bitches. <laughs> my, my partner, my partner laughed so much when he heard. And uh, starting from that moment, every time I was uh, I was feeling down, he kept he kept asking me, "Who are you? Tell me, who are you?" And I was and I had to respond, "I'm Alina fucking David, you bitches." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was funny. That was funny. And I think the other days, or a, a week or a couple of weeks ago, my partner was kissing my bum and uh, talked to the baby uh, uh, through my belly button. Uh, yes, I know. My partner talks to the baby through the belly button to be sure that the baby hears him. Yeah. So, <laughs> so he was talking to my baby and he said, Oh, baby, you know, your mom is a little bit tired tonight and sad, but you know what? She's all in a fucking day with you, bitches. Your mom is a badass. <laughs> Alina, yeah. I mean, this is such, you know, this is such an amazing transformation. And I mean, what an honor it is for us to be able to share in this because it takes a very strong an authentic woman to be able to own the fact that she was toxic. And that is, I, I mean, know. you know, I, I don't even, like, it, it's such a blessing to be around a woman that is willing to own her shit and to, to be able to look at her shortcomings and, and to find ways to, as you say, correct that, to, to develop it, to move past the toxicity into creating the life that you really want. I mean, yeah. that's extraordinary. A lot of people don't even have the self-awareness to accept the parts of them, you know, that they're messed up. They, they, they want to blame everybody else. They want to blame the doctor. They want to blame mother. They want to blame father. They want to blame exes. You know, I think that what you're demonstrating for us here is truly the power of a woman taking ownership of her life, ownership and responsibility. And, and the fact that you connected these two things, the fact that your toxicity was blocking you from having the life, the baby that you wanted, 
is just incredible. Yes. What do you think, what do you think it was in you in order to be able to do that? Like, what was the switch that flipped for you to say, you know what, I've got a problem. I need to get some help. Yes. Uh, so while in this journey and um, when I started the sessions with you, I, um, I started to also read the books you recommended. And um, I, uh, I started to read the uh, uh, Dr. North, Northrop book, Northrop, mm-hmm. am I pronouncing correctly? Yes. And I had a mind blowing moment when I had to write down what I learned about motherhood from my mom, you know? I was blocked, I was totally blocked. The first thing I do, I I call my sister and I told her about this exercise. And you know, she smiled and she told me, have trust, don't be afraid. I know, you know what to write. And she knew, you know, because she lives even worse traumas than than me about her self-esteem and trusting herself. And Roseanne, I I started to write and write. And after three pages, I stopped and I wanted to go back and read. And it was there, nothing positive. I mean, nothing positive. Yes, my mom loves us like crazy and we know it. But the memories and what I learned about motherhood, oh my God. I mean, we, me and my sister, um, uh, we are born one one day difference as a, a birthday. I mean, I'm on 14 of May and she's on 13. And we, we are five, uh, five years difference between us. And every year uh, we hear a story, same story from my mom. She will start like, um, I remember your birth like it was yesterday. And you know, you hope for a story full of love and caring and strong, positive emotions, right? I mean, but no, no. I remember your birth like it was yesterday. Oh my girls, that long painful labor, such a huge pain. I felt for 36 hours and nobody cared about me. Your dad came drunk after I, uh, I, I gave birth uh, uh, to see that I have girls instead of boys. Uh, your grandma uh, wanted boys and she was also upset. And um, I had surgeries uh, to help you get out and I had infections and I stayed in the hospital for days too much suffering. Uh, She told me, uh, with you, I wanted to be a girl because I refused to satisfy their desire of having a boy. But with uh, with your sister, I kind of wish to be a boy to close all those resentments, but my heart wanted another girl. So these were my mom's words. Um, No, uh, nothing like, uh, wow, I was happy when I saw you. I was dying to keep you in my arms. I couldn't get enough uh, of looking at you. No, only negative part of this entire birthing process. Um, after raising, uh, um, about raising children, my mom was uh, only, I had to keep you clean. I had to keep you uh, keep the house clean because uh, what people around us would say. Uh, I had to offer you the best clothes and food, not to show the world that we are poor. Um, you know, I didn't have time to play with you or go to the park because I had to take care of the house. Um, and the most painful is that my parents were in a constant fight, and everything happened in front of us. All my mom crying nights were in our room and all her hate and frustration was there shared with her, uh, with her children. So um, after reading what I wrote, um, I realized that this is not what I wanted to be. I want to love my kids like my mom did. I wanted to take care of them like my mom did. But 
I wanted to create a bond with my kids. I wanted to have a positive, strong mindset. I wanted my kids to see me as a role model and not something they want to get rid as soon as possible. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, this is how the, I we don't I we don't play my... surface games in this program, right? We we don't stay on the surface in this program. This isn't just like woo woo nonsense. We we go for the jugular. Yes, yes, yes. Well, so I mean, so. I think it's really powerful, Alina, that you're sharing that essentially you were running around blocked because you had equated motherhood with suffering. Yes, exactly. I mean, it's incredible. And, and, but look at what happened because I remember in the program, so much of what you were doing was about allowing yourself to receive, to be able to be open to receiving the things that you want, to forgive yourself, to allow yourself to have the motorbike that you wanted, to be able to do things, to do motherhood, to do life, the Alina way, not the way that everybody else was wanting you to do it. Yes. Yes, you're right. Yes, you're right. And, um, Realizing the, the, this, I, I went back to the year when I took that decision about the abortion, and I realized that I was influenced by my mom um, because I was financially independent. I had a good career. I, I could have had a house. I mean, I could have it could have been easy for me to raise a child by my by my own you know yes i had some issues with my relationship but my mom said i will support you but what people will say you know oh. um and um i don't i i don't know because i i've never paid attention with of people's opinion about me or something but i don't know because i was in that suffering and I, I have no idea i have no idea but i realized that also my mom uh the um, was a factor that there in my in my decision the abortion mm -hmm. um right. and, well, and uh, it, it's interesting alina that you know because for you this journey really became about a healing not yes. just a physical healing but this was really about an emotional mental spiritual and relationship healing because in a very short period of time, you were healing your relationship, you were forgiving the past, you were making peace with a relationship with your mother that is a complicated one. Um, yes. You know, not, not unloving, but certainly complicated yes. and really allowing yourself to become something really different. Yes. Yes, indeed, indeed. I, um, in a way, I was always conscious about um, because since I, um, I remember since I left my my uh, parents' house and I went for for university, I always said that I don't want to to have the same uh, uh, life, the same relationship as my parents, and um, um, I got married, and I. It was always in my mind, I don't want to do the same. I don't want to do the same. But I was doing the same. You know, mm -hmm. I was doing the same. I was, I was that toxic, judgmental, critic. I was criticizing my husband, I remember. And he was doing nothing. I mean, just because he was not, I don't know, he didn't do the dishes or he didn't put his sweater in the uh, uh, wardrobe but on, on the bed. I mean... And I was young, instead of enjoying my life and my relationship, because I was so in love, I was just focusing on this. The house should be clean. Um, everything should be in order. I should receive a guest and the guest should see my house that is clean, you know, these kind of things. What is that? <laughs> it, it's a pattern. It's a pattern, Alina. And and I, man, I, I love that you're raising this because this is a red pill. This is a real wake up call. I think for a lot of us 
to be willing to look at our pattern, to be willing to look at our patterns and ask us ourselves a question, is this pattern actually leading to the life that I really want to live? Is this is this working for me? Because most people don't even do that. Most people just accept that this is how life is and life is suffering. My journey has to be fucking miserable yeah. without being open to the kind of things that you're open to. Because I remember when you came, I remember the Alina at the beginning of the program. And I remember the Alina at the end of that eight weeks, because very shortly thereafter, something rather magical happened. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah. Um, so during those sessions and after those sessions, uh, me and my partner, we continued our investment in a good communication. Um, uh, I think this is the uh, key of, the, of a good relationship. Um, and I started to relax uh, and really enjoy my life. Uh, I started to, and I think this is the most important, I started to be grateful for what I have and not for what my parents would have wanted me to have, you know? Um, I started to smile. I started to admire myself as a woman, a caring, positive woman, and not that woman desperate of, uh, for attention and bossy and perfectionist. No. And... Um, um, after I finished, uh, after I finished uh, the session with uh, with you, um, I remember I had the, we had a call. It was two weeks before leaving to Santorini to Greece with my partner. This is this is another this is another advice I I took uh, uh, I took from you, uh, um, and um, this was like enjoy your time with your partner, and. Uh, to be honest, this vacation was booked during the sessions, uh, uh, the, the sessions weeks with you. So, um, uh, so I said I was I was in the call with you, lying in the middle of the bed and crying about pandemic and my social life, uh, crying about not being able to wear heels to the office because of uh, the, the working from home. Uh, and, and I remember you you laughed and said, "Okay, Alina, let's make a plan." On a short term, go and take uh, go and take the gym membership you told me about it. Plan a day per week uh, to start going into the office in London, and for now, just focus on your holiday in Greece. Don't think of something else, and let's talk again when you are back from from Greece. And we did. So after I came back to Greece, we had a talk. And the talk was about me being pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> you work fast, woman. <laughs> and I remember you posted a picture of one of our fearless bags. Yes. And I, it was in Santorini. And I, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's incredible. Because <laughs> think about what you did, Alina. You were so worried that this baby wasn't going to come in. You were, you know, struggling to, you know, get, get yourself in order and, and receive and, and be open to the fact that you could have it all. You could have a great relationship. You could have a, a wonderful career. You could do motherhood on your terms and you could love yourself. Like you could have all of those things. Yeah. You're living proof that a woman from Romania moving to the UK could have exactly what she wants like do you realize that yes yes I am I am and you have a motorbike and <laughs> a motorbike yes a motorbike. I'll never forget I, when I you sent me that I picture. can't write it right now <laughs> <laughs> but yes. it, but you're you're living proof Alina of the power of doing the work you really were willing, I mean, because look, you're smart, you're beautiful, you're funny, adventurous, you know, educated. You could have easily said, you know what, all this mindset stuff is nonsense, right? This is nonsense. The doctors are going to get me pregnant. I don't have to worry about any of this, but that's not what you did. 
what you did yeah. is you created a scenario where you covered your bases physically and mentally. And look at you now, because you didn't have to do IVF. Yes, I didn't. Uh, uh, you know, I wanted to send an email to, to the fertility doctor and uh, say, look, I'm pregnant, natural, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, and also- Despite, like, think about it, Alina, like, like, let's put that into some context because you were told you had low AMH. Yeah. Partner had bad morphology, yeah. right? They said, I think your words were not promising. Yes, yes. And look at what you did. Yeah, and only after, so that this um, uh, with the doctor, with the fertility doctor happened at the end of June and in uh, uh, September, in October, I was pregnant. <laughs> That's incredible. And you did, uh, yeah, and so you were pregnant really quick after the, I, if I remember correctly, it was fairly quick after the program, you were pregnant. Yeah, I end up the program at the end of August. Yes. That yeah. is incredible. That yeah, is incredible. Was. But you know, Rosanne, I was, I really liked the, 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 those sessions and um, I took it very seriously. I mean, I went through all those modules and even in, I think, a beginning of, just before Santorini, I wanted to go again through all those uh, uh, modules. So I think I started with the first two modules and I went back to all my uh, answers to, to your questions in those modules. And I, I tried to make an update because I said, maybe let's see what change in the meantime in my, with, with my mindset. And Very I realized smart. that I started, yeah, I started to add more and more to those, uh, to those questions and to think more about that. So uh, um, I never, I never thought of, um, I don't know, thinking of, my uh, my fate no i knew that i have nothing with uh, religion or god or but i never thought about it you know and when i did that module i was whoa i i blocked i blocked myself in front of this god for me it's god you know just because i have these traumas from from my childhood or because I went through a divorce or because I had an abortion, you know? So I, I refused to, to, uh, to be close to God just because I blame him because of my miserable life, you know? So as, as you said, I was blaming everyone, but not me. Hmm. But it's not about blaming. It's not about mistakes. It's, this is a personal development. I take it as a personal development. Now. I love that. I love that. You're like, it's just personal development. I mean, <laughs> but, but that's such a powerful thing, Alina. And I'm so grateful to you. And I know that the women listening to this are going to be grateful to you as well, because having come from the background that you have come from, you were able to heal you were able to set, instead of being bitter and angry and, and blaming everybody, you learned a way to be able to say, this is just personal development. You were not in denial. You owned exactly what happened. You forgave it. You're moving forward and look at you. How many weeks pregnant are you today? I'm 25. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 25 weeks. <laughs> oh my gosh. And that bump is adorable. Well, so what are some of the things that you would want women to know? Like, what are some words of wisdom? Because, you know, you've come so far and I think it would be such a blessing for the women listening to, to hear some words of wisdom for you, from you about maybe some key things to keep in mind as they live their journey. Yes, um, if I, if considering my experience with, uh, with, with the past, um, I could say, ladies, look at your past, you know? Um, are, you, are you living the past? Are you uh, living your mom's life uh, and um, um, her expectations from life? Um, are there any, motherhood dramas there 
that impacted your life? Um, are you trying to comply with your uh, parents or friends' expectations? And if yes, um, if yes, it means uh, you identified, um, oh my God, you use a word for this, sorry, baby brain, the word saboteur. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> You've got some saboteurs, yes. Oh, baby brain. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, take a look at it, of this, uh, of the past, and think if is this what you really want i mean do you do you want something better from you and um i think i think that we should learn to take only the positive parts of the motherhood from my from our uh, parents from from our mom and create our own uh, uh behaviors and beliefs uh, and I'm sure that each of us can do that because we are all unique, you know, and um, we should build a life we enjoy. A life where, uh, a life where the baby comes and uh, uh, a life where, no, no, a life where, when the baby, where the baby comes and when he wants and, uh, um, and he will come only when he sees that you are ready. You know, um, he sees that um, you uh, you love yourself and uh, your life, um, and uh, he sees that you are uh, capable of anything, of anything, only to be happy. And the most important, ladies, I think, gratitude is everything. Um, as long as as long as we uh, as long as we are not okay with what we have and uh, we don't enjoy it, nothing good will happen, you know? I mean, or even if, even if will happen, we won't see it because we are more focused on have uh, higher expectations or live, of course, a miserable life uh, full of complaints. I mean, this is what I did, you know? And now when I'm grateful for what I have and I enjoy every moment, and come on, I don't have a perfect life. I mean, I have days when I struggle financially or I have days when I would like to be, to live in a house with uh, five bedrooms, not two, or I would like to live in center of London and not in the, um, I don't know, the 50 kilometers from London, you know? But I live 50 kilometers from London, but I live in the middle of nature. I'm two steps away from the forest. You know, this is what I'm grateful for. Not because I'm in the city, I'm not in the city center of London. So uh, yeah, I think this is um, this is my uh, this is my advice for 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 every lady who tries to 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 get pregnant. To focus on themselves first, yeah. You know, on focus on yourself. Forget about comparing yourself with others and copying others believe in you and um, um, your power to manage your life in a positive way. Uh, trust your guts and go for opportunities. Smile to life and enjoy your relationship with your partner and friends and family. Um, and of course, be that person you would like your child to see and be proud of. You don't want, to, you don't want your child to see uh, a weak, scared, pessimist, and always complaining person. I think that's so to, beautiful. I'm ready to be a mom. <laughs> I can tell. It's obvious you're ready to be a mom. I mean, Alina, thank you so much for sharing this with all of us because the transformation that you are describing and frankly, the decision because you made a decision that you were going to be different. You made a decision that you were not going to repeat old patterns. You also made a decision to, to take the good from what had happened in your life, focus on that, release and forgive the bad, and move on. 
And look at you today. I mean, the relationship you have with your partner, he's talking through your belly button to talk to the baby. I mean, it's like such a different world. It's such a different experience. And you have this because you were the woman who, who was willing to become that. And yes. so thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, you remember when I had the interview with you, uh, Roseanne, I told you that, yes, I want to have this um, uh, to, to, to go to these uh, coaching sessions with you. And not only for the fertility, but also for my personal, as I said, my personal development. And I see this transformation has an impact, not only on the fact that I became pregnant, but now just today, just today I had an acupuncture session with a doctor um, um, and who is my is part of my team. Yeah. <laughs> was, well, he was always part of my team. And I told him, look, I have nothing to complain. I feel full of energy. And trust me, I will go through a C-section because I have some uh, issues there. So the, the doctors told me that I need a C-section. I can't go natural. Um, I was sad at the beginning. And then I said, this is it. What can I do? You know, there are so many ladies in the world having six sections. So uh, as long as me and the baby, we are healthy and uh, good, then it's not a problem. But I feel, I feel positive and full of energy because I continued with this session, with, with this uh, process, you know, I continue to read books. I continue to, 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 to listen podcasts. And this, this keeps me positive. And I think this is helpful for my uh, for my pregnancy. If I have a day when I'm too busy at work and I'm only working and I don't have the time for yoga or I don't have time for a workout, I start to have cramps, uh, uh, to feel dizzy, you know? I said, okay, I stop doing what I enjoy. So the next day I will do what I enjoy and I can see the difference. So, yes. uh, yeah. Your body is speaking truth, Alina. Your body is exactly. keeping you honest. Your body's like, you got to stretch me. You got to feed me. You got to rest me. You got to hydrate me. I mean, I think this is beautiful, Alina. And, and I got to tell you, you know, I can, it, it's always very clear to me when a woman was, is ready to make a change. That's why I asked that, you know, the, you know, the questions that I ask in the interviews, that's why we even interview people because if you're not ready to make a change, you know, you can't force it, but you were ready and look at you today and, and what an honor it has been to be by your side. So thank you so much for sharing this with us. I know it's going to be touching lives all over the world. And there's going to be so many women inspired by your story. You're just glowing. I can barely stand it. Look at that smile. And I of just can't. Course. Of yes, course. And you're I was in a fucking baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Alina fucking David. So you're going to have to make sure to send me an update with that picture of that beautiful baby when, when your baby's born. So thank you so much, my love. Appreciate thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you also, uh, Roseanne. Thank you. Love this episode of the Fearlessly Fertile podcast? Subscribe now and leave an awesome review. Remember, the desire in your heart to be a mom is there because it was meant for you. When it comes to your dreams, keep saying hell yes.